Well, hey, YouTube, it's Elvis Ammo here. Hey, today we're going to make some ingots and we're going to make it simple. And uh, first of all, I'm going to show you exactly everything that you need. And uh, so I went out and I bought a, a special pot just to do this video. This is a, uh, a five quart Dutch oven. And the reason I did that is because one reason is I, I, would, I needed another pot myself. And the second reason was I wanted to see where I could get one and uh, see where I can get a good one for very little money. And, um, and then be able to show you where I, or tell you where I got it and show you what it looks like. So this is a five quart Dutch oven. Um, we're gonna go through step by quick step, step by easy step, making these ingots so that we can cast some lead. So um, this is a five quart Dutch oven and it's uh, from Walmart. And this is uh, this is the box that I that I bought it in from Walmart, and uh, I'll try to put a link to this box to this uh, Dutch oven as well. So it's a five quart, and uh, I measured across the top of this, and it's exactly 12 inches, and across the bottom inside here is 10 inches. And what this does for us is it gives us a really wide surface area to set it on our burner that I'll show you in just a minute. So uh, this is what I consider a perfect pot for this situation. Um, today we're going to be melting down uh, lead wheel weights and separating out some zinc and steel from it. Um, and uh, we're also going to be melting down some rain scrap just uh, you know just right out of the berm from other people shooting and um, and I'm gonna show you step by step every piece that you need um, and uh, but the first thing I wanted to show you is this pot and I wanted to tell you where I got it from and why it's so good now I don't care about these legs very much on the bottom here don't impress me at all for the purpose that we're using it for but it's going to work just fine anyway now the next thing it comes with this handy dandy handle that goes on here like this I definitely do not recommend leaving this on even because it will tempt you to pick it up by this handle and this is not water lead is very dense when you melting metal that metal can shift from one side to the other and no sooner you pick it up by this handle this pot will tip and that's a very dangerous situation so I would say just go ahead and take this handle right off of there we don't we don't want that on um, and uh, I just uh, I'm on in this video uh, I normally go kind of dangerous and I dump the pot and I just use welding gloves but um it gets very heavy, so I just jimmied me up a, uh, a little uh, a ladle. Now you can buy a ladle. I just took and drilled through this metal ruler here and uh, put some rivets in there. And uh, I've not tried it yet, but we're going to see if this thing works. But it gives me a way to dip down real low in there and ladle my lead into my ingot pan which I will show you in a minute so first things first here's the pot now what we're going to do is we're going to prepare some lead to go in the pot and then we're going to get it cooking all right so what we're going to find inside uh, this bucket inside this pile of, uh, of wheel weights is we're going to find good soft lead that you can cut a little indention in like that and uh, 
and it has see that little line right there I left on it that's good soft lead so for the purpose of this video we're going to keep things compact and we're going to put our good soft lead that we find see how it put a little cut in there this is uh, I know that there's a lot of ways to do this um, this one um, you know it almost could fool you and look like zinc but you can see how soft it is it cut so that's what we're trying to do here we're trying to separate out our soft lead and the zinc because we can't have zinc spoil our batch now um, we're also separating we're putting all of our wheel weights inside this pot um, our soft wheel weights our lead wheel weights in there and then these stick-ons like this that are pure lead are very soft and you can cut them in half with these pliers if you want and the soft ones I'm gonna put inside this pot and the reason I'm doing that is because I want to separate out all of the good soft weight and I can make uh, softer lead bullets if I want and uh, in this batch of wheel weights now this right here it won't cut <laughs> and uh, it has FE on it so this is iron all right so iron is not going to melt in our lead so we're going to separate that and I have another bucket over there for iron um, or uh, I actually need another bucket for zinc um, I'm going to just put my zinc in with the iron is what I'm going to do all right there's soft I'm separating all my soft stick on weights now this is something that you will be able to do basically with your eyes closed if you do it a few times um, that's I, I can pick this stuff up and I already know what it is most of the time but sometimes one will fool me and I'll have to check it with these pliers like this and that's soft I know that's that's good so it just kinda looks like this I put a little gas in it and it just goes right in and you can get through this stuff real quick just like that most of this is just good nice soft wheel weights there's a stick on weights now for instance this is another stick on weight right here and uh, this actually is zinc um, I know it is by looking at it but it's uh, it's zinc so and then another thing that you'll find in here besides iron see on that one it has FE on it that's iron we'll go in the other bucket now there's salt now if we make a mistake um, and uh, and get something now I, I can see that right there won't cut I can already tell you that's iron and it, um, a lot of times these things are marked and if it's already marked you know it's a no-brainer and another thing that we'll run across is um, is we'll run across plastic they even make plastic wheel weights like this one right here it's actually plastic wheel weight <laughs> who knew right now I can tell because this one is welded this clip is welded to the back of this weight that it's iron because it's welded on there so some of this is just kind of a no-brainer um, I may do another video another time on maybe a uh, another way to do this and uh, you know that uh, is maybe more of an advanced way I would say uh, this is a good way for anybody to do to separate their weights no matter how long they've been doing this um, oh, I just threw the wrong thing in there um, this is a good way for anybody to do it I don't care how long you've been doing it just go ahead and separate the the lead from the zinc and uh, and be done with it 
but what some people like to do is uh, in my opinion is more a more advanced way of doing things they've been doing it for a long time and they have a good feel of how things work now see that one has a ZN on it that's zinc so we do not want that in our lead that's the main thing that we're looking for if you get metal in there or or plastic in there all of that stuff's just going to float up to the top of our pot no problem but the main thing is if we bring the temperature up too high to the melting point of zinc then we'll have zinc mix in that's iron fe so um this is uh this is real easy stuff nothing to uh nothing to get excited about and think it's too much to do you can just sit down with a couple of buckets and just separate this stuff out like that and uh no big deal you'll get through a whole bunch of it faster than you think it looks kind of like a uh a daunting uh task but it's really not and you get your soft weights i'm gonna put them we're gonna melt them separately so that we'll have um ingots that i call you know soft lead or pure lead and i'll put those ingots aside for other projects or other type bullets now that's another thing with um, with some of this is you can also tell just by tapping it against your a metal you can tell that's metal versus a piece of lead it don't have that ring to it it's a lot duller sound so um and then you know if if you are separating wheel weights that's how you do that but if you're picking up rain scrap like that then you can uh first thing you want to do is in, inside your bucket of rain scrap that you have is you want to make sure there's no live rounds in there because that can be devastating um it, you wouldn't think there would be but sometimes people are stupid and they end up throwing a live round a dummy round i mean a, a dud or something like that in the berm so you always spread this stuff out make sure there's no live rounds in the case and before you throw this in your melting pot so the next thing we're going to get to is the burner that we're going to use and uh and then we're going to crank that thing up we're going to get this stuff melted down and get some ingots all right so this is my burner right here i just got one of these kind you can see what it looks like they call it the high pressure it's got the, the burner right in the middle you can crank it up and blow some heat out of there pretty good um, I like that kind myself uh, the best, but you can use, you know, the regular burners or that one. Um, now we have a, uh, a full pot. That's just one of them old cheapo turkey fryers, and I put a couple extra bars on it just to support everything good. We got a full pot here. Set that on there. And uh, make sure it's centered. that little shroud that I have around it that you just seen um, that's just a, a shroud that I kind of jimmied up around there for whenever it's windy you know it keeps that, uh, that flame in there um, and that's just something I've done uh, no big deal anyway um, so now we got the pot on there I got it cranking and I'm gonna put the lid on it important that you have it covered so you can keep the heat in there. Um, it's also very important to know that if you, uh, um, if you have moisture inside this, that's not good. Now on your first run, all the moisture will obviously cook out, but you don't want to put anything wet inside this lead once it's melted. Um, right now it's just going to all burn off moisture is going to melt out but anything that you add to the pot after this you want to make sure it's completely dry that's very important so now we're going to put the lid on there and uh, we're going to let that baby cook 
get it well done, and then I'll uh, I'll bring you back and uh, I'll show you what's left on top, how we flux the pot, uh, very simply flux the pot. I'll show you that, and then we'll scrape off the uh, metal clips. Get all these clips that we all be floating on the top, and. Uh, and hopefully I didn't miss any steel or iron or uh, zinc. Um, but during this process, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stir it a couple of times. And if there is something oddball that's not wanting to melt, I can usually find it. So, here we go. I'm gonna let that burn off. And I'll bring you right back. All right, so. melted down some and you can see the lead melted right here see all that lead melted um, and I'll tell you how long it's been here in a minute um, but whenever it does that best thing to do is uh, just go ahead and throw a little bit more on top like that after it melts down like that and then we'll put the lid back on um, Matter of fact, uh, where's my wire at? Well, probably looking at it. Um, but I guess I don't need to tell you that you don't need to be breathing all of that smoke. So you either have a fan or outside upwind side of all that smoke that's grease and all kind of whatever it is you know, all over those wheel weights and uh, whenever that melts down I'll bring you back and uh, show you some more of the story all right let's see what that uh, let's see what that pop is I figured I'd use this uh, stupid wire thing here. You can use to lift your lid up if you want. Oh yeah, I think we're looking good. Now I did that one more time when I had the camera off. I, had, uh, I threw one more load in there. So now what you do you see where I piled them up on this side right here. job it was uh it was less than 20 minutes from the time i put them in to the time you saw the pot last so they were uh they were starting to melt real good in just 20 minutes in this pot which i think is really good now what we're going to do is i got a slotted spoon right here which is really nice because all i gotta do is pick this up and all the lead just falls right off of it i'm gonna Throwing in a metal pot. See that clips, they come off just nice and clean. Nothing to worry about. All these are just metal clips from the wheel weights. Keep your spoon nice and hot by keeping it in the bottom like that, and the lid rolls right off. If our uh, homemade ladle works. <laughs> and uh, I've got uh, those are my ingot hands. Um, I'll put a link in the description of where you can get 
those deviant pins at. And the reason I'm going to do that is because if you buy the cheap junkers, they're worthless because they'll be destroyed probably the first time you use it, where these pins won't be good over and over and over again. So if you're interested in a deviant pin, I'll have that for you. Now the next thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and flux this. Some people don't do this. But I'm going to go ahead and flux it. What it's going to do is it's going to clean all this lead up and get some of the impurities out so I don't have much to deal with whenever I'm melting it down again inside my bottom pour pot to make bullets. So let's do that. going to use my trusty old jar of sawdust so it's going to do some smoking like that we'll let that burn off and then I'll bring you back all right I think that's burned off good I'll roll in a little picture of what it looked like. It had caught on fire. So now we just have this uh, burnt char in there. And we're going to scrape the pot. Like that. What a lot. 
lot of people do is before they before they empty their whole pot out, they'll go ahead and put more weights in there so that it's uh, easier to uh, to melt down you know, the next batch. I'm not going to do that just because I kind of run out of time here. And, uh, I'm not going to have enough time to, uh, to do another batch. But I wanted to uh, I wanted to show you this process you know, and, uh, and just show you how easy it is to do. I'm going to go ahead and turn this fire off. pretty loud in it <laughs> so I'm gonna finish filling these up and then I'll bring you back so you can take a look at them all right so now this one right here is set up and I'll show you how they come out of the mold just like that and I'll let you take a look at them there they are right there they're beautiful and uh, that's uh, we got uh, 16 of them three pounds a piece so we're looking probably right around 50 pounds and uh, you know it melted down in you know 30 minutes to melt a 50 pounds of, uh, of lead from you know from turning on the the burner so it's just as beautiful as that it's kind of addictive as well you know if you get into doing this it's just kind of cool you know melting this metal down it's uh you know obviously has very different characteristics than just about anything that you'll ever do um, just the way that it, it works um, you know just working it so there's some pretty cool things you know to uh, to just the whole process it's pretty awesome so and you know whether you buy your lead or you know from places like Rota Metals or if you're just using rain scrap right out of the berm at the range or if you're getting wheel weights I'll probably do another video on other things and uh, other ways to get lead to acquire lead and that kind of thing and uh, but for now there's all your lead make all the bullets you want I'll see you in the next video